My name is Mike Smith from Relief Chatham Kent, and this video is going to take you through a brief overview of the process I've gone through over the past year to naturalize my residential property in North Buxton, Ontario. In June 2019, I attended the Greening Your Grounds workshop hosted by Lower Thames Valley Conservation Authority and funded by our local Rotary Club. This educational event covered various methods for incorporating stormwater management techniques into home landscaping projects, including things like how to direct rainwater from a downspout into a rain garden, and tips on how to best create wildlife habitat. One of the speakers was Larry Cornelis from Sydenham Field Naturalists. SFN is Chatham Kent's only naturalist club, and Larry's presentation on native plant species and their incredible importance to wildlife diversity was really eye-opening for me. Larry touched on the important work of Doug Tallamy and his book, Bringing Nature Home. I went home determined to replace a lot of the non-native plants in my garden and improve the quality of habitat I was providing on my property. At the time, I was living in a small house on the north side of Chatham, but I had what I thought was a fairly large garden area to fill with native plants. The first chance I got, I took a trip to a couple of the only native plant-specific nurseries in our area, Heavenly Earth near Bothwell and the Amgenung Greenhouse in Sarnia. Within a couple of weeks, I had removed all of the non-native plants and filled the gardens to the brim with a sassafras tree, various sunflowers, asters, and about 20 other different native plants. Not bad for my postage stamp sized yard. The pollinators showed up immediately. I had monarch butterflies on the milkweed, a huge variety of bees, and more moth species than I can identify. It was only a couple of weeks before I started to realize that I wouldn't have the space to do what I really wanted restore some of Chatham Kent's lost forest habitat. Larry's presentation had highlighted the importance of trees and shrubs, and I barely had any room left to add any more, which led me to start a search for a rural property with more room to spread out. In the fall of 2019, I moved out to North Buxton and 1.15 acres of blank slate, a wide expanse of lawn. I had LTVCA come out and make some recommendations on a restoration plan and we decided to work towards the final goal of establishing a small forest with oak and hickory trees as the dominant canopy species. The neighboring property is fully treed so there is a good seed bank of dogwoods, sedges and silver maple to spread outward over the years. I was also very fortunate to connect with Mathis Natvik who's an accomplished wildlife biologist from the Highgate area who has decades of experience with restoration projects in CK. Together, we established a multi-year plan to convert my lawn to a forest. The first step was removing some of the unwanted non-native shrubs and trees, such as Rose of Sharon and Norway Spruce. Once those had been taken care of, I started to focus on selecting the list of tree species that would be planted the following spring. Many of the oak species I wanted to concentrate on were available on LTVCA's annual tree sale, so I worked with them to secure a Forest Ontario grant to supply 400 native saplings. May of 2020 was a bit of a blur. Once the trees were delivered, I would come home from work and plant trees till I lost the light. Many projects of this size plant their trees in orderly rows to make mowing and maintenance easier, but I'm a glutton for punishment and I wanted a more natural look. The 400 trees I got from LTVCA were supplemented by some larger selections from Heavenly Earth and spaced out about seven feet apart. I determined where in the yard to plant various species based on their moisture preference. The low wet spots got a healthy dose of swamp white oak and paper birch, while slightly drier areas got red oak and shagbark hickory. Once the trees were all planted, the real work of keeping them maintained, protected from rabbits, and properly mulch started. Trust me when I say it's a full-time job to stay on top of weeding, trimming the grass, and topping up the mulch on over 500 new trees. I also experimented with a few other things over the summer. A rain garden to capture some of the roof runoff out of a downspout, using cardboard, compost, and mulch to smother the lawn to create a new milkweed garden, and digging a few pit and mound areas to recreate the natural topography of an older forest floor. This is a cool technique that simulates what happens when a tree falls over and pulls up a large area of soil with its root ball. The resulting pit holds water longer into the late spring and the mound of soil where the tree roots break down creates a drier area. This variation in moisture levels creates microhabitats for plants that would otherwise likely not establish in a flat lawn. Going forward, the plan calls for supplementing the existing trees with new saplings from the LTVCA tree program every spring. 
Some trees won't survive, and others will be lost to rabbits or deer, so it's important to keep adding new trees until they establish well. I am also planning to overseed the remaining lawn with a custom wildflower and prairie grass mix that will hopefully provide benefit to pollinators until the trees create too much shade for these full sun-loving plants to do well. Early on in this process, I realized that it would be great to have a place to share ideas with other folks in the community who were interested in helping restore some of our lost natural habitat. With that in mind, I created a Facebook group called Relief Chatham Kent, which has grown well beyond what I hoped was possible and helped me connect with so many wonderful people in our community who are passionate about native species restoration. There are so many amazing new projects happening here in CK, like the Prairie Project, the Pollinator Garden, and a few Relief members working on multi-acre restoration projects. Our group has participated in tree planting, invasive species removal, and hosted a lecture series that touched on forest cover and remnant prairie habitat in our region. I'm excited about the future of Relief CK and seeing how we can come together to learn from each other and the land.